This is essentially how bonds are valued. If you understand present value, you understand bond valuation. There it is. Bonds are a series of cash flows. So if bonds usually, uh, a corporate bond pays $1,000 or par value is $1,000 and that's how companies borrow money, you would give them that $1,000 in year zero and you collect the coupon semi-annually. So say the coupon's 5%, you would collect two $25 payments every year for the length of the bond. So if it's a five-year bond, you would have five years of, 25, of two $25 payments or so $50 a year, and in the final payment, you'd get your $1,000 back, assuming that the company pays back your loan. So if you use that and you look at this on page, and I hope you read chapter eight carefully, on page 189, you start to see how bonds are valued. And at the bottom of the page, you see that the, um, the cash flows, uh, if you use a higher discount rate than the bond is issued at, you're gonna get a lower price. And if you lose a lower discount rate, you're gonna get a higher price. And think about that for a minute. If bonds are issued at 5% and the Fed has lowered interest rates and a comparable bond with comparable credit and uh, with the same maturity, is uh, now trading at 7%, you would discount your cash flows by 7%, and you'd have a lower value. Like for instance, in this example, your value in this case is $951 on a 10 year, on a three year bond, which is lower than the ten than the $1,000 issuance, because the bond coupon doesn't change. So the principal has to change to make up for the additional interest. Or in other words, if the bond was originally paying 5% and comparable bonds are now paying 3%, the market will discount those cash flows by 3%, thus coming up with a higher present value. And that's how bond prices are determined. And that's why when rates go up, bond prices go down. And when rates go down for comparable bonds, bond prices go up because effectively when rates go down, we're discounting our cash flows by a lower rate than the rate the bond trades at. And when rates go up, we're discounting the cash flows by a higher rate than the bond trades at. So that makes up for the fact that the coupon doesn't change, but the buyer of the bond at that point or the market value of the bond is higher in a lower interest rate scenario or lower in a higher interest rate scenario. Which also tells us with the Fed lowering rates that people are piling into the bond markets because the bonds have done better. If that should reverse itself, it could be very dramatic if you do the math in terms of losses of capital. Now, if you hold on to the bond until maturity, obviously, you're going to get everything back. But why hold, why, you're not going to be happy about holding on to a 5% bond or a 3% bond when everyone else is earning 6%. So essentially, you may not see the loss on paper, but you're feeling the loss. And by reading the chapter, what I'm saying will make more sense to you. These informative uh, charts on the bottom show you the effect of discounting when we raise rates, how the bond values go down. And here... They show you, again, a present value of a bond with a semi-annual payment. So the bottom line with bond valuation is you really need, and here's another great um, chart with the relationship between required return and the present value for 10% coupon bonds at various required rates of return. And you watch that this 20-year bond has a higher value as I lower the rates of return. It's a 10% bond but it really drops more dramatically as I raise the rate because you have more length and you're discounting further. And conversely, the 10-year, the five-year bond notice has less sensitivity to interest rates because it has a shorter life. To use common sense, if I lend money to somebody for five years as opposed to 20 years, I know I'm getting the money back or the agreement is I get the money back sooner, so I'm not in as much risk. So I don't have that type of sensitivity. And... Um, by reading this chapter and paying attention to how, and, and going to Excel and, and, and doing the math on Excel and watching how cash flows react to different interest rate scenarios, you start to see why in a declining interest rate environment where the Fed has been accommodating, you get better bond values and more people piling into the junk, into the bond market, especially the junk market. And in worse interest rate scenarios or higher interest rate scenarios, bonds can back up dramatically. And that's one of the fears in this market is that the Fed raises rates and bond values go down dramatically. Now, among the things that affect bond values are credit is huge. A uh, company's credit, will, if it's, it gets better, they'll pay a lower rate just like your own credit score. And if it gets worse, you pay a higher rate. 
so credit is big, length is big. Those two items are very big. The other, they, that's called basis risk. Because if, if essentially bonds are priced over the comparable treasury. So if you're a corporation issuing five-year bonds, you're gonna be viewed as what percentage do you have to pay over the five-year treasury bond? Right now the five-year treasury is about 2%. If you're, pay, if you're a double B credit, you're probably going to pay 4 or 5%. It's actually low, relatively speaking. That's called the basis risk. And uh, if the markets start to back up or you see the stock market go down, you'll see that spread widen as people worry about company companies, whether they can pay their debts. I mean, you're seeing it in the retail sector now that companies cannot pay their debts. As Jimboree went out of business, a lot of retail companies are looking like they're going out of business. So uh, bonds are essentially, the way you need to think about, a, think about a bond is it's a tradable loan. It's a tradable loan. And all bonds are a function of what the Fed does or about the risk-free rate. And here you can see that in Exhibit 8.8. .8. It's a big function of economic conditions, industry conditions, unique conditions. But the main, the main uh, factor is going to be what the Fed does with interest rates. So when they lower interest rates, it'll be cheaper for everybody to borrow, right up to the most uh, uncreditworthy borrower. And when they raise interest rates, they affect the entire market. But besides that, their policy is gonna be a function of economic conditions, uh, industry conditions. You start to see in Europe, as countries are having more trouble paying their debts, it flows right down to the individual companies. So this is a great uh, chapter to read. I have homework obviously attached but I want you to spend some time with it, and I hope you found this video informative. Please contact me with questions.